That's good, too. Um, today, we are going to have the Lord's Supper, as you can see right up here. You can prepare yourself starting right now. It is welcome to anyone. We ask that you be saved to do that. Next Saturday, men's breakfast at 8 o'clock. Men, tell people. Invite someone. Show up. It will be fun. It's a very, very good time to, to have. Um, the Reach Texas SB, SBTC Texas Association offering through the end of October. I just butchered that. <laughs> You did. Reach Texas. Help me, Wayne. I don't know how to All do right. it. It helped me with that. What's SBTC is uh, Texas Southern Baptist Association. Thank you. Texas area. All right. I missed it. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, our Operation Christmas Child Shoebox, you can see out there. We're out of some of the little cards. We printed off some more. Please pick those up. They're going to be in by November. 13th so that's coming up really really quick and for people that are watching you do not have to get a shoe box you can send money in and it will be taken care of so there's more than one way and on that paper you can go online to give next Sunday now y'all listen to me listen to me really really good the time's gonna change if you do not change your clock you will be here early should we tell them that is that okay <laughs> Don't Everyone will them. be here early. They'll be is here that, for Sunday school. They'll be here for Sunday school. And I, if I'm not mistaken, this is the last time the time changes. That's right. Yes. Forever. <clears throat> then it stays like that. Any other announcements? Anybody? Silent your phone, Shy said. <laughs> Put them on silence right now. Now is the time. Anything else? Y'all stand and I will pray and we have a video afterwards. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today, Lord. I am so thankful to be in your house. Lord, I am thankful for each and every person that's here. I lift them up to you. Lord, I thank you so much for our church. I thank you for yesterday and the fall festival and everyone that participated, Lord, and the families that come. And Our, our, our church just shine, Lord. I, I thank you so much for that, for a loving, caring church. Lord, I just ask you right now to be with the praise team. I just pray for anointment upon them. Lord, I also ask you to be with Brother Danny as he brings a message today, and I just pray for anointment upon him as well. Lord, it will be my prayer that if someone doesn't know you, they'll come to know you from song or from, from the words that are said, Lord. Thank you so much for what you do in this church, Lord, and I just pray right now that that continues to be like that, that we'll be lighthouses for you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love this church. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all remain standing. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have a video after this song. How's that? Yeah. You, you know how Wayne is. You know how he is. is. You, left, you, you need these notes, Wayne? David. That's David. Oh, David. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, let's sing. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you full of trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you gone and spotless on a white and snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom comes, the robes be white. 
My name is Elizabeth Costner, and I'm from Latvia. My childhood was not the easiest one. I had two younger siblings with me, and we lived in a super poor environment. My birth parents were very alcoholic and drug addicts, and so living with them was always never safe. One day, a social worker came to my house. She walks in, and then not long after that, she goes into my car, and she tells us to get in the car. And she drove us all the way to orphanage. Me and my two younger siblings, we lived in an orphanage for about a year. At the end of the year, the social worker came back, and she asked if I would like to be part of a foster care family. The word family got me to say yes right away. I only had a foster mom. From the very beginning we met her, she pointed out that she never wanted older children. She made it clear that any time I disobey or got out of line, she could send me back to orphanage. I don't want to go back. There was a day she took me and my siblings to an organization that was doing food stamps. We got our food. But then I was about to leave and my foster mom was like, hey, not yet. And then she guided me towards the long line of people just standing. When it was our turn, the person just looked at me and gave me a shoebox. And the person just smiled and said, here, it's a gift for you. I did not understand why a stranger would give me a gift. Foster mom told us we had to wait till we get home. That was the four longest miles in my entire life. I also remember it was a cold winter day. We didn't even notice we were cold. So when we got home, my younger siblings dug in right away with the box. And the first thing I saw was their joy, their happiness for the first time. It warmed my heart so much to just see them happy. Then I looked down at my box and I just looked at it. I opened the box and the first thing was this little purple mouse. It's my first toy I have ever owned that was just mine. Besides the box, I also got a greatest gift booklet. The booklet was full of illustrations. I was amazed and I loved the illustrations and colors and so I started reading it. It got my curiosity up so high because it was talking about Jesus, the Lord, resurrection, prayer. But most of all, I think meaning that He is my Savior and that He loves me made me rethink everything I knew about what I was going through. It wasn't until a few years later, when I was about 14, when I was going through some hard things. I didn't felt loved from the day I was born till I got to foster care system. Even through there, while she cared for us, there was really no love, no emotional attachments. I remember the connection the booklet gave me, which made me remember what I read. 
And so when I read that, it made me really feel like I cannot believe a stranger will feel love for me, which helped me to really pray for the first time. It felt like a warm, invisible blanket wrapped around me. It felt like Lord was giving me a hug. Officially, He has found me. And so from that day, I never stopped praying. I prayed that we would officially will have a family. Our prayers were answered. We finally got a family. We were adopted in Arkansas. This picture was taken in Latvia because my friends traveled to my country to pick us up officially as their daughters. Their love for us is strong and pure and I love them so much. I told my mom and my dad, we have to pack a box. So each member of our family ended up packing a box and we send it off every single year. It may seem simple to others, but it spoke so much to me and meant so much to me. Alfred Hudson's child, Shoebox Hit, changed my life. Amen. If you haven't uh, gotten a shoebox yet, you're missing a blessing. Because it is a blessing to give. And, uh, you know, we're all blessed, aren't we? It doesn't matter what's going on in our life. We have Jesus Christ in our life, and he's a blessing to all of us. So uh, let's stand as we sing. Count your blessings this morning. Discouraged, sinking, all is lost. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has. God hath done. Amen. You may be seated. We need to be resolved to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, men, now listen up. This is a song y'all can shine on, okay? You guys have a deep baritone or bass voice? Okay. Because on the chorus of this song, it's going to say, I will hasten, hasten to him, hasten so glad and free, hasten glad and free. Okay, now it's, it's going to be in yellow letters up there, so you guys sing out now, okay? David, can you do it? Okay, yeah, get those guys down there to hip you. All right, here we go. I am resolved no longer to linger. I will hasten to him, 
guys did pretty good. Y'all that sang, some of you didn't sing, though. No. We're having the Lord's Supper this morning. So let's uh, stand as we sing this, Break Thou the Bread of Life. Father God, we do come to you today just thanking you for your love, Father. You sent your son to die for our sins, Father, that we could be with you in heaven someday, Father. And we're having the Lord's Supper today. I ask you blessings upon it. But I do ask you to be with Brother Danny this morning as he does bring your word, Father. Just open our hearts and let us hear what it is you want us to hear, Father. And if there's one here this morning that doesn't know you, I pray that they'll come to know you before they leave this building today. I do ask you to be with Miss Kathy this morning as she brings the offer to her song. It's just She's got such a voice that you gave to her, Father, and we just praise you for her this morning. I do ask you to be with the offering this morning, Lord, and just if we take it up, Father, just use it to bring glory to your name. Let's use it for the things that you'd have us to use it for. It's in Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Oh, y'all, it's been a long week. If y'all weren't here yesterday, you missed it. We had a lot of families and children, and looked like everybody had a great time. A lot of you youth showed up, and what is your name? I love you. You sing so good. And the Lord says that we are to make a joyful noise. And I can hear him singing up here, y'all, so that's awesome. We have a youth singing loud, so yes, amen. So my, um, my special today is throne room, and part of the lyrics is run to the throne room. And since I've been listening to this song, it's like I need to do that every day, and I don't. I fall short. I don't run to the throne room every day. I go to the throne room, but I don't run there. And sometimes my, my getting there is a little hard sometimes. I struggle with it, but I always try to get there. But my goal now is to run to the throne room, and I hope you all can do the same thing. Dream, you are speaking to me 
run to the throne room. I run to the throne room and I fall on my face with angels and saints and all I can say is holy, holy, holy are you. Microphone on this week, don't I? All right, good, all right. Thank you, Kathy. Wow, thank you all for, uh, boy, there's so many people yesterday that were so involved in, and involved in doing so much that I want to just give you a word of thanks. Boy, what a, what a perfect activity. Uh, the Fall Festival, it wears you totally out. I went home and Janice was going to cook some eggs and, and, uh, I sat down on the couch and I was asleep like that and so she had to wake me up and then I didn't have any trouble sleeping even after that and, uh, when I went to bed. Uh, so I know many of y'all can share that as well. But what a great activity. Tons of folks are folks involved and it takes tons of folks. You know, it, it, for a pastor, uh, it's kind of a stressful thing, you know, because there's so many things that need to be done beforehand. Then you have to have workers, and what if workers don't show up? Then we have the rain, and what if it's going to rain? 
and then uh, the rain stopped, but then, uh, okay, well, but are people going to get out because it's kind of, it's going to be too cold, and, and it all worked out. And it was just wonderful, wonderful event. Uh, just registering and, and, and recognize a lot of people don't register, but just with registration, we had 55 adults, 66 kids. We only have 50 kids on uh, Wednesday nights, and we had more than that that showed up yesterday. And that doesn't count all the other people that just came. doesn't count all the uh, teenagers that showed up, because I'm sure y'all didn't register, did you? Probably not, no. And we did it, you know, the adults did it, so I would guess that we had probably 200 plus people easily uh, out here yesterday. It was all, it was great. Yes. Thank you all. It is a horrendously difficult thing, especially if you're over 40, and I'm over 40. But what a blessing. What, a, what, what, what graciousness. And I heard words, many parents came to me and said, thank you so much for doing something like this. I mean, really, I, you think about, it, this is kind of a Halloween alternative. Uh, and we gave out lots of candy and lots of games. And, and they just said, thank you. And then I had, uh, and, I, and, uh, and I'm not sure, it was Marilee's, I don't know whether it's Frittle Kids, was it the Frittle Kids that came with you, Marilee? And Marilee said that uh, the girl said, this is the best day I've ever had. That's because she won everything and outshowed all the boys and all those things. But still, yeah, y'all made it possible. And so uh, I, I, I intended and I just didn't have enough energy to put together a slideshow. But maybe we'll do that for next week. And in the midst of all of the anxiety and stress and worry that I went through, the Lord reigns. Right. And he shows himself Amen. to reign. And so I want us to take this morning and, uh, and talk about that. Merely, if you share the video, uh, the Lord reigns. We'll have one more music video and then we'll pick up our last message from Genesis.
one thing we've figured out as we've studied through Genesis is our God reigns. Amen. He reigns. He reigned in creation. He reigned uh, before creation. He reigned when all was in order and he continued to reign even in the midst of disorder. He reigned in judgment. He reigned in grace. And he will reign throughout eternity. He reigns whether we align ourselves to him or not. But he reigns in our lives when we do align with him. Amen. So this morning I want us to, as we close our study of Genesis, I want us to think about the fact the Lord still reigns. And we'll see it one more time this morning. Father, we invite you now to speak to our hearts. Lord, would you help us this morning to celebrate the fact you reign. Help us to celebrate as we think about what you did still in, the, in this early world, but also in what you did later as we think about your reigning uh, through Christ and what he did for us on the cross. So, Father, we pray you'd, you'd help us to align with you. Lord, if somebody here doesn't, has never made you Lord of their life, They've never come to Christ as Savior. Lord, I pray that they do that this morning because you reign. And you want to reign in grace in our lives. So, Father, we pray you'd cause people to respond and be saved this morning. And, Lord, I pray for every Christian that, Lord, we would intentionally align every part of our life with you. Speak to our hearts this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. As we finish up Genesis, the Lord still reigns, even if we seek to live without him, is kind of the piece of the message this morning from Genesis 10 and 11. The Lord reigns. And by the way, when we see the world drift, as we see around us, as we see culture change and move away from God, as we see a nation that is built on God's principles change those principles and go a different direction. Can I say the Lord still reigns? Though the world drifts into opposition, uh, we're post-flood. We have Noah and his family, and they've had children, and there is a population now on the earth and they have great potential for God. This group of people, now the whole earth had one language and one speech. They were unified. They could do what God wanted. They didn't have opposition. They, they didn't have obstacles. You could, if we wanted to contemporary uh, view this, it's like being in a nation that was focused, principles, laws, culture, along with God. Great potential. 
And yet, what would happen? What would happen? The potential doesn't mean anything. Although the Lord reigns, are they going to align with him? And so, we find that the people had no intention to do God's will. No intention to do God's will. It came to pass, as this group of folks journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. They journeyed east. Uh, maybe no significance here, other than now we're going to see them move from God. You can have great potential for God. You can have truth. You can have blessing. But what are we going to do? Are we going to move towards God and carry out his plan? Or are we going to go our own way? And this group of folks, they are people. They are lost people. And they have no intention to do what God says. In fact, uh, they begin a pattern of neglecting God's will. Uh, you know, there's a real danger of drifting for everybody. All we have to do is not be intentional and we'll drift away. Here, this group moved east. They found this great place and they began to settle there. By the way, God had said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. They're not doing that. They're doing their comfortable thing. They're, they're, they're gathering together in one place, and they're dwelling in one place. Here you have a pattern of neglecting God's will. You don't have to try. You don't have to try. You know, uh, the way that looks like in today's world typically is, uh, you know, you, 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 it, 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 for Christians, I, I, you can see it I, as a pastor just all the time. First thing you know is, well, you know, I, I've got a really good excuse not to engage with God's people and do God's stuff. Got a really good excuse. And then next week, I've got another excuse. And then next week, there's another excuse. And the first thing you know is, I don't have to have an excuse. As you drift, Hebrews talks about drifting. If we're not intentional at serving God, we'll drift away absolutely will happen if we're not engaged, if we don't make him the priority, if we're not making serving him the priority. And yes, there's stuff that comes up. And yes, there's things and there's health and there's fam there's all kinds of stuff. But, but is it a priority? Is doing God's will, does it matter? And if it doesn't, there's a drifting that goes on. A pattern of neglecting God's will. Now, they aren't doing anything radical yet. Uh, we'll get around to spreading around the world later. We'll, uh, you know, we'll just set up housekeeping here and, and get stronger, and then we'll someday do God's will. But they're not going to do it because they're neglecting what God had called them to do. And now, it gets uncomfortable, by the way, when we neglect. When God is leading us and we don't engage... We, we, we pull back, we drift, and the first thing you know, we begin to leave God out because if we're not aligning with him, it gets uncomfortable because he begins to convict us. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks, make them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar, and they said, come and let us build ourselves a city. Let's leave God out altogether. Let's just do stuff. Let's do our own stuff. Let's, we've, we've, we've drifted away from, to, to where we don't, we don't even need God. We can just live our lives. After all, and I can say this to, to folks that, a lot of folks that are kind of retirement age is, you know, we, we've served, we, we've done what God wanted us to do all our lives and now it's just time to relax and let somebody else do it and we'll just drift away. They said, come, let us build ourselves a city. We'll build our own lives. We'll establish our own stuff. And, and we won't worry about God so much because after all, name your excuse. They left God out. And when you leave God out, sooner or later, 
you replace God because we have a need for God. And if we don't find it in Him, we'll find it in something else. And they said, come let us build ourselves a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. Let us make ourselves great. Let us do great things. Let us catch a billion catfish. Let us uh, find the biggest bass in the entire world and claim us to be famous uh, or whatever it happens to be, right? Fishermen always get, around Lake Fork, we always say a lot about fishermen, don't we? But it could be anything, right? The thing is, they replace God. Because we have a need for something to, to give us meaning. And you'll find something. You'll find it in, you know, a dating partner. <laughs> you'll find it in sex. You'll find it in alcohol, drugs. A bass boat, family, good things. But we don't want it to be God. And so they said, let us build our own way. But this is the wrong way. They're drifting away from God. Let God out, now replace God. As a nation, let's leave God out of our culture and eliminate God. And then we have to replace him with you know, wokeness, we have to replace him with all kinds of, whatever the scenario, and where none of us are immune, the reality is we drift, let God, leave God out, and then replace God with something of our own making. And now I oppose God, because he's, see, God doesn't let us alone, right? He doesn't leave us alone. He's always penetrating, seeking a relationship with us. And if we leave him out, he's going to try to, get, to speak to us. And so we've either got to respond or push back. And they said, come, let us build ourselves this city. Uh, let us build a tower to heaven. Let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we're liable to be scattered abroad on the face of the earth, which is exactly what God wanted, had God commanded them. So let's resist what God wants for our lives. Let's do what we want to do. And we don't care about God. And in fact, we'll build up hedges to where it's easier to resist God. The world drifting away from God. But can I say, the Lord always wins. The Lord reigns. He wins. He, he is preeminent. We cannot push him away because he's real and he reigns. The Lord shows up in this case. But the Lord came to see the city <coughs> and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one. They have one language. This is what they begin to do. And nothing that they propose will uh, to do will be withheld from them. If, if the Lord doesn't so do something, they're running to hell and take the whole world with them. But the Lord shows up. He's not oblivious. You know, that happens in individual lives as well as in national lives like this. Uh, I'm just going to, for whatever the reason, move from God, replace him with something, and just ignore him, and then, bam, God hit. Just suddenly, out of the blue, he gets our attention. Because, see, he doesn't want the world to run off to hell. He doesn't want us to live our lives in futility and wastedness. He wants to relate with us. He wants to use us. He wants to transform us into his image. The Lord shows up. And he defeats the opposing plants. He says, come, let us go down and confuse their language that they may not understand what another speech. In this particular case, everybody's speaking the same language. So God says, I'm going to oppose their plan. I'm going to keep it from, from being fruitful. I am going to flip, break up this relationship. I'm going to bring this thing into people's lives. I'm going to stop it. 
And it's so easy for God to do. Because He reigns. And so when we think we can run from God and we can do it our own way, we can't. And, he's, and He defeats the opposing plan. Let us go down and confuse their language. Hey, they, they think they're hot stuff. And it changes like that. That's what he does. Can I, arg I could argue grace, and I can argue judgment. And it's both, right? He can get our attention. And the intent is to draw us to him. He defeats the opposing plans. And he accomplishes his plan. The Lord scattered them over the face of all the earth. That was the, that was the command in this particular case. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, represent me across the world. And they said, no, we're going to hold together. And God said, boom. Okay, you can no longer talk to your neighbor because they speak Russian and you speak Chinese and the other guy speaks English. And what a confusion that's going to cause. And so he scatters them. I've always wondered, I, I don't know, I, I wonder if also racial distinction may not have occurred at the same point. I, I've wondered that. Is you have language differences, you have the beginning of cultural, and, and so you just truly segregate across the entire world. And so they were scattered as God accomplishes his plan because man's attempts become chaos. They cease building the city. And the name is called Babel. Blah, 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 Confusion. Confusion. Because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Chaos. Oh, if only. And you get it, you find it's Chaos. You know, that's, that was my story, right? Even at 19 is, oh, fame, uh, great school, and, and, and you know, and, uh, and, you know and, and success, and, and it's chaos because it doesn't fuel. And so, they ceased their building. They ran into all kinds of places because man's attempts run into chaos. You know, I guess if I, you know, and, and if I had a word, I always have lots of words, right, to young, young folks. Uh, who was it? Somebody. We were having a discussion about testimonies the other day. And, uh, oh, I know, it was Gary Long. He was talking about his daughter came to him one day when she was younger, and they had heard about all these great testimonies of people that were horrible, nasty, horrible people, and they got saved, and now they're different, and it's wonderful. And she came to him and said, Dad, do you have to be bad to be good? And, of course, the answer is, no, you don't. What a testimony. To get the message early and not destroy your life that has to be redeemed, but to have a life that is for him, that's pure, that shows Christ, that overcomes the evil because of Christ at work in our lives. So that it doesn't have to be chaos. And I'll guarantee you, God loves you enough to bring chaos in your life if you pursue the wrong things. Right. And that's an act of grace. Man's attempts become chaos. And in the midst of all of this, we're, we always get caught up in our stuff and our little things. But in the midst of all of this... God's working out his bigger plan because he reigns, and he reigns at a large level. And we worry about, uh, you know, how inflation is going to impact my budget. And God is concerned about us, but he's also working out a worldwide plan as well. And so here we see in these, these beginning chapters of Genesis, and we're not going to read all of the genealogy. Yeah, by the way, genealogies have some significance and, and impact, if you read them all, then things jump out at you. But let me just say, in chapter 10, it says, this is, the, this is what happens to the sons of Noah. 
Shem, Ham, and Japheth, sons were born to them after the flood, and it begins to list the names. God's at work in their lives. God is at work in Noah's family. He's at work over the nations and the powers in this list. Interestingly enough, I just pulled some pieces out so I didn't have to pronounce the bad names or the hard names, you know. I, I could have let some of y'all talk. I, I could have let you read the... No, no, okay, I won't. Okay, I, I'm not either. All right, so I'm just going to pick out some of the... But, 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 but look at the names. These are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Magog's listed. Egypt, Canaan, Babylon, Assyria, Nineveh, the Philistines, Jebusites, Amorites, Gergesites, uh, Hivites, Sodom and Gomorrah, Syria, all of the great enemies of Israel are listed here. God's plan included them and used them. And the implication is, because God reigns, they fall within his plan. The world is not out of control. And those that seem to be the greatest enemy God has allowed to accomplish his plan. The Lord is bigger than the nations. In fact, some of the names, Magog, Russia, uh, we could say Russia, China, uh, Iran. God is bigger than that. Recognizing God can use even evil nations to accomplish his purposes. Several of these, many of these became trouble to the Israelites, God's people. Why? Because they said. And God uses the nations to draw his people back to him. And even in our own nation as it seems to stumble and flip along... God uses even evil men, evil women, corruptness. He uses those things. And at least one of the way he uses those in his big plan is to draw us back to him so that our dependence is in him, not in the government. Amen. If for no other reason. He reigns over the nations and the powers and he unfolds his plan which involves individuals. And we see an individual unfold here in chapter 11 as you get the genealogies and the impact is you read all these lists of names and names and names and, 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 he, and he lists Japheth and he, he lists uh, Ham and then, then he lists Shem and the genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old. He got he uh, he <coughs> begot Arphaxad two years after the flood, and and Arphaxad then uh, after that he lived 500 years, and he begot sons and daughters. And there's a list, and there's names, and there's names, and there's names. And at the end of these lists of names, Nahor lived 29 years and begot Terah, and some more names, and then Terah lived 70 years and begot. Abram. In the list of all these people, a man pops out. The genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begot Lot. Haran dies. Uh, Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot and the son of Haran and his daughter-in-law Sarai, who it says is barren, uh, and uh, uh, that was Abram's wife, and they went out from Ur, and they came to Haran, and they dwelt there. Hundreds of names narrowing down to an individual. And the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I'm going to use you. In all these names, and across the Old Testament, New Testament, you have names and you have people, and out of that God uses individuals. 
who will follow him by faith so that he can bless them and use them and do great things through them and reach others through them the unfolding of God's plan he uses people what's the salvation of the nation it's not the next president whoever that might be the nation is not dependent on a lost politician the salvation of the nation is based on individuals that love God and God brings great revivals through men like Neil Moody. He used great revivals through Spurgeon, through Whitfield, through Wesley. Uh, changes a culture through prime ministers of England that were godly. He uses people. May our hope be in God and allow him to change us so that he can use us. And then, of course, ultimately, verse 3, and in you... All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Bigger than Abraham found in Christ. Looking forward to knowing that every human being, no matter how faithful, will fail. And there had to be one who would not fail. And so, ultimately, he sends his son. God man born so that he could take on the sin of the world and my sin and your sin man to die for man God so he could pay an eternal price and he could pay for the price for all men who will come to him through you all the nations shall be blessed God reigns. Amen. Are you allowing him to reign in your life? Do you know him as Savior? Have you crossed from a place of life or death to life? We've talked about we talked about that last Wednesday with ladders. It's a decision that needs to be made or we remain in a place of death. Have you trusted Christ as Savior? That's my first question. The Lord reigns and he provides the opportunity for you to know him because of what Christ did. We're going to recognize that in a minute as we remember what he did, which was die on the cross, broken body, shed blood so we could have life. Have you trusted him? If not this morning that would be a time trust Jesus as Savior and if we're Christians oh man, let's, not, let's, not, let's not do this wonder thing let's be intentional let's do the hard thing let's let's pay the physical price to serve Christ let's serve him to the very last day If you need to make a decision I'm going to invite you here to make that decision now let's pray first Father we love you and we invite you now to speak to our hearts you reign and that's good may we willingly yield to you speak to our hearts and cause us to respond however way you choose in Jesus name Amen would you stand with me? And we're going to sing a song of invitation. If you need to make some sort of decision, would you slip down here and do that? Oh, to Jesus I surrender All to Him I freely give I will ever Surrender all.
Thank y'all for, uh, would you please be seated for a moment. As the deacons come forward, let me just say a physical way, uh, a visual way that we acknowledge the Lord reigns is by taking the Lord's Supper. It's an act of worship that shows He is worthy and we're grateful for what He's done for us. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse 23, he says, I have received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. The Lord reigns because he died for us. A picture of what it cost to obtain our freedom and our salvation. Body broken, tortured, mutilated, blood poured out. He died in our place. In our place, Jesus was punished. Physically, emotionally, spiritually. And so we remember the cross. What Jesus did, the fact that he still reigns. And that he comes again. This is called worship. Now as we eat and drink, may we remember what he's done. If you've trusted Jesus as Savior, seek to walk with him. We invite you to worship with us by taking the bread and the juice here in a moment and partaking with us uh, with us uh, here in, in after we when we're ready. The deacons will pass out a double cup, has bread and juice. Hold it until we pray and we'll eat and drink together and we'll worship our Lord and Savior and remember that He reigns.
my soul rejoice take joy my king in what you hear may it be a sweet sweet sound in your ear and we'll consider that the benediction thank you for being here today